Good morning and thank you for joining us this Lord's Day. We invite you to worship with us at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will gather this morning at 9 o'clock for Bible study with classes available for all ages. Following our class period, we will engage in a period of worship beginning at 9.50. This evening we will gather again at 6 o'clock for worship and again on Wednesday night at 7 for Bible study. You are always welcome at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, Now, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Hebrews 4 and verse 7, the inspired writer says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. There is a prevalent idea in the world today that there is no particular hurry about obeying God, that it's all right to take plenty of time to think it over. Friends, this is of the devil. It's devilish. And after one knows what God's will is for him to do, and then refuses to do it, he must harden his heart in order to keep from doing it. And this is a very dangerous process for a person to engage in. Perhaps you remember that Jesus said to a certain man, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at, at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 59-62 From this we would learn that the Lord expects us to obey him immediately. There is no tarrying, there is no looking back. Nothing must take precedence over our obedience to God, not even burying loved ones and bidding farewell. Christ expected these men to follow him immediately. They knew that they should follow him. They knew that if they didn't, that their hearts might become hardened. But every time that we harden our hearts, it becomes that much more difficult to follow the Lord. The time to follow him is immediately upon learning of him. To delay obedience means to harden your heart. And God says, do not do this. We turn to Acts chapter 13. And here we have the gist of a wonderful sermon that Paul preached in Antioch of Pisidia. The Jews spoke against those things which were spoken of Paul, contradicting and blaspheming God. But how did these inspired preachers meet this situation? Then Paul and Barnabas, they waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. In verse 46 of Acts 13. Paul preached the truth to them, but they refused to hear it. And then Paul turned his back upon them. As verse 51 says, But they shook off the dust from their feet against them, and came into Iconium. Paul went to Corinth, and there he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean from henceforth. I will go to the Gentiles, Acts 18, verses 5 and 6. Paul thought there was no use of wasting his efforts on people who would oppose themselves and blaspheme. He turned from them, and he was clean in this turning. Their blood was upon their own heads. Friends, we cannot make people obey the gospel. We can preach it to them plainly and kindly. If they will not obey, their blood is on their own heads, but not upon ours. 
There are those who will obey the gospel, and we thought to do, as Paul did at Corinth, to turn to them. But if people will not obey the gospel, then they're left without excuse. It's too plain, it's too simple to be misunderstood. The mysteries have been made plain relative to our obedience to God. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans 1 and verse 20. Friends, when God says that people are without excuse, it must be so. We have a record of two men who learned the truth of the gospel, but then asked for more time. Felix needed some plain gospel preaching, and he got it at the hands of Paul. Paul took for his subject righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. The preaching was so powerful that it made this wicked man tremble. But he hardened his heart. He knew what he needed to do, but he postponed his obedience and never did obey. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Acts 24 and verse 25. That convenient season, so far as we know, never came. And oftentimes it never does. Quitting wickedness and sin is a very inconvenient thing. But when gospel preaching makes a man tremble, he better obey the gospel right then and there while he has that opportunity. King Agrippa was another man who postponed obeying the gospel. And from what the scriptures reveal to us, this man went on to die a very miserable death. And no greater sermon was ever preached than the one that Paul preached to Agrippa. We're able to read it in Acts chapter 26. And after the king had heard this marvelous sermon, he said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian, Acts 26 and verse 28. Almost, but lost. Agrippa hardened his heart. He was not ready to quit sin and turn to the Lord. Friends, in New Testament conversion, all who obeyed the gospel obeyed it when they first heard it. On the birthday of the church, the ones who obeyed did it after the first sermon that they ever heard. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, Acts 2 and verse 41. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Acts 8, verses 5 through 12. The eunuch heard only one sermon and obeyed. Acts 8, verse 26 through verse 40. Paul obeyed the moment he was told what he needed to do to be saved in Acts chapter 9. Cornelius heard one gospel sermon and obeyed in Acts chapter 10. Lydia heard the first sermon and obeyed, Acts 16, verses 13 through 15. The jailer heard the gospel and was baptized the same hour of the night, Acts 16, verses 24 through 34. After a man hears the gospel and does not obey it. He is adding sin to sin. He begins to commit a new sin, as revealed in James 4 and verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This sin is one that is willful. And this goes for members of the church as well. For friends, there is no more dangerous sin than a willful sin. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 
of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of god and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace hebrews 10:26 through 29 and friends when the saints come together and you decide to forsake the assembly you have trodden underfoot the son of god and counted the blood of the covenant an unholy thing do not forget that the passage that's here quoted comes immediately after hebrews 10:25 which says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Friends, we need to think about this, this Lord's Day. We need to think about this each time that Satan puts that temptation in our heart to skip the services of the church. We need to think about it on Wednesday nights when the devil tells us that we're just too tired. That we do not need to get out and go to Bible study because we went on Sunday morning and that's good enough. Or whenever a gospel meeting or some other type of special event is taking place and we try to justify not being there with our brothers and sisters. Friends, what we are doing is we are not counting the blood of the covenant as a holy thing but we're viewing it as an unholy thing when we refuse to obey the truth as revealed by the Holy Spirit we are rejecting the Holy Spirit Jesus said wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him and whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matthew 12, verses 31 through 32. And ultimately what Jesus is referring to is when someone continues to refuse to obey the gospel. When they understand what they must do in order to become a Christian and to be faithful to God, but they harden their hearts to the point that they are no longer touched by the Word of God, then, friends, they have reached the point where they have committed blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God is no longer able to prick their hearts because their heart has become so pierced, has become so seared, has become so hardened by their continued rejection of the will of God. Yes, the scriptures tell us that now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So many times we see those who know that they need to become a child of God, but yet they continue to put it off. A story is told of a young man who stepped out into the aisle to respond to the invitation one night of a gospel meeting and about halfway down the aisle, he changed his mind, and he went back to his seat. The next night, the preacher watched for this young man, wanting to speak with him and discuss his faith with him. But the young man never came in. And after services, he began to inquire of some of the other members as to where this young man may have been. And he received the devastating news that the following night, this young man was on his way home from worship services and he was in a car accident and lost his life. This young man knew what he needed to do. He knew that he needed to obey the gospel. But yet he turned away. He allowed doubts. He allowed the pulling of Satan to keep him from obeying the gospel. Friends, we need to consider these things. And today, if you are not a child of God, we would encourage you to follow those steps that the scriptures set forth. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, then repent of your sins. Confess publicly your faith that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Thank you for joining us for our program today. And may God bless you with a wonderful Lord's Day.